So today's video is an introduction and kind of orientation to Fernando Soar's 25 studies from his Opus 60. So I have a new edition of his Opus 60 work, so number one all the way to number 25. And you can see a link for that um, sheet music PDF or hard copy in the in the YouTube description or on the website on the website. Um, so Fernando Soar's Opus 60, as I said, is 25 progressive studies. And I would say the studies range from around the grade one level all the way to the grade seven level, but the bulk of the studies probably lie more between the grade three to five. The first studies are quite easy, so much more on the easy side. The last few studies, much more on the difficult side, whereas the bulk of the inner ones are, are definitely just like at the intermediate level. There's often uh, different ways that people will approach these studies. For some students, they're picking just one or two every once in a while from the collection, you know, um, a study that fits their level or their pedagogical purpose. Um, at other times, um, a student will go through all 25 to check their skills. And this is a very important thing about these collections of etudes, which I'm starting to publish much more, is when you play through an entire collection of etudes, you really can iron out your musical skills. Um, you go over so much content by going through all 25 that you make sure that you tackle all the different aspects of your playing that need to be tackled. You're not skipping over something just because you're picking your pieces one at a time. You're being super selective about what pieces you are playing. Instead, you're playing all the pieces within a collection and making sure that you're able to play each study well, regardless of what texture it is or what technique it's going over or what musicality it's requiring of you. So by playing through all 25, um, you are able to do that. So if you're going to play through all 25, you should be on the intermediate or late intermediate level. But if you're more on the beginner side, you can play just the first, you know, five or, or 10 studies. Um, it really just depends on, on where you're coming from, of course. I consider the, the main goal of these pedagogical studies in terms of pedagogy, um, I, I think it's playing legato over a, a variety of textures. So your ability to play legato melody and legato textures over a variety of different styles of, of composition. I think that's the primary goal compared to, for example, um, Carcassi's Opus 60, which have very clear um, technique goals on each piece. You know, some pieces are slurs with thirds for the entire piece. He's very st he's strict about those kind of technical goals. Whereas in Fernando Soares' pieces, I find that he's much more focused on the musicality of the piece. Um, they're, they're much more um, elegant compositions. So they have a, a less of an exacting um, technical requirement. But nevertheless, each etude will have like a different um, pedagogical aspect that it will emphasize and it will have a different, some, many of the pieces do have very clear pedagogical goals, whether it be um, bringing out a melody from a texture or slurs or arpeggios or whatever it might be. But certainly in Fernando Sor, your ability to play elegantly in the classical style kind of a Mozartian kind of style across various textures, I think is the primary um, thing that you, you get out of the studies. As I make videos for each etude in the collection, I will point out um, a number of, of things that I think the etude is good for. I'll also talk about um, some of the, the phrasing and the fingering and, and all those, those things. So um, I'll just talk a second about my edition of the music. So a couple of things here. Um, there's left hand fingering, and I've pretty much followed Soar's left hand fingering about 90% of the time. So I, I really follow his concepts. So if he plays something in second position, I will also play it in second position. However, I have updated some of the fingering to be a little bit more modern for the modern classical guitarist on our larger instrument, of course. And so occasionally I'll change a fingering in order to make a passage a little bit more legato or ergonomic. But, you know, 90% will be his fingerings and 10% maybe I've, I've, I've changed a little bit to suit the modern player. Right hand fingering, there's no right hand fingering in the original publications and I haven't included it in my edition. You might find a, a couple of them here and there, but for the most part, I haven't. 
I think that for an intermediate student, um, if you've gone over scales and arpeggios, um, you're probably just going to be just fine with these studies. Um, in particular, in my technique book, if you've gone over like my 100 open string studies for the right hand, plus maybe some of the Giuliani 120 arpeggios, then this, this collection will not give you trouble at all. Generally alternating your fingers on the upper voices and using your thumb on the bass. Um, in the individual videos I make for the addition, I will address right hand fingering a little bit just to give you some um, good ideas to work with, but for the most part I've, I've left it as the original. There are a number of uh, notational oddities in Soar's Opus 60, the original publications. I have kept all of these notational oddities, with the exception of a few. Uh, you know, he'll write out a passage and write it in a certain way in notation, and then later in the piece he'll write the same passage when it repeats itself, but he actually changes the notation, and 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 like he'll do the voicing differently or the sustain of a note differently. So there's definitely contradictions and oddities. I've kept them, and I've kept them because um, it's easy to read through them. They, they won't affect your playing. It won't affect your ability to play the piece at all. Um, but it might give you insights into how Soar might have thought of it. Some of these oddities might be copy errors by the publisher, original publisher. Um, other ones might be just Soar writing inconsistently. Um, but nevertheless, sometimes he, they give little clues as to his musicality. So I've, I've kept all of those oddities, with the exception of one or two where it um, created confusion for the rhythm. So I've corrected any kind of... Um, notational errors in terms of rhythm, but kept the notational oddities um, so that you can you can choose what Sora might have wanted. But again, super easy to play through these studies and not even notice any of those oddities at all. So I will be giving um, lessons for all 25 studies, and I hope that by going over all 25, you'll have a really enriched uh, experience with the studies. When I first started looking at these etudes, um, back in my college days, I didn't think much of them. I thought they were kind of just small little pieces. I didn't find the pedagogical um, purpose as clear in comparison to like Carcassi's or Villa Lobos or something. But now going over them again, you know, a student's ability to play in legato and to bring melodies out of a texture and to play smoothly through these studies um, in the classical style uh, is really, really helpful not only to their technique, but especially to their musicality. These are very musical little compositions, and your ability to play through them will actually be a testament to your technique and your ability to play technically clean, but also in a very musical way, which I think is um, extremely important and shouldn't be neglected by students. You know, you're just your basic ability to play legato through various textures is so important for every student to learn at some point in their development, whether that be when they're starting out or later when they're an intermediate student or late intermediate student and they decide to go through all 25 studies and really iron out their musical playing, I think this is a great collection to do that with.